Hi, I'm Jose, and today we will take a quick peek into Philippine copper. So, in a previous video on the Philippines' top exports, we found out that copper cathodes brought in over $158 million in export sales in January 2021 alone, making it the country's fifth top export product. A friend of mine suggested that it might be interesting to look into the Philippine copper industry. As this is just a quick peek, we will try to track what is behind the country's sizable copper cathode exports. But we won't be able to cover all aspects of the domestic industry, such as the downstream players that are already recognizable to most of us. Just to have a quick background on this product, a copper cathode is essentially pure copper and thus serves as the raw material that is melted to produce copper rods and billets that eventually end up as copper wires and tubes. So we know that we are exporting hundreds of millions of dollars worth of this copper cathode, then this made me think that maybe there is a strong copper mining industry in the country behind these sizable exports. According to the website of the Department of Trade and Industry and Board of Investments, the Philippines is the fourth largest country in the world in terms of copper reserves, with a whopping 4 billion metric tons in estimated reserves. However, I could not find any other institution that carries the same claim that the Philippines is home to the fourth largest reserve of copper worldwide. Let's see what the United States Geological Survey had to say in their mineral commodity summary as of January 2021. Supposedly, there are only 870 million metric tons of copper reserves in the world, with Chile being the top nation in terms of reserves, and Peru, Australia, Russia, and Mexico making up the rest of the top five. The USGS lists a few other countries in their report, but you won't be able to find the Philippines in the ranking. However, the USGS does mention some information on global copper resources, with identified resources totaling 2.1 billion metric tons around the globe and estimated undiscovered copper resources at 3.5 billion metric tons. For our appreciation, reserves are deposits that have already been discovered and have been assessed to be profitable, while resources include reserves as well as other deposits, whether discovered or yet to be, that are still just potentially profitable. But anyway, the question is not how much copper does the Philippines have in its reserves, but how is the Philippines able to export so much copper? In a report by the Mines and Geosciences Bureau of the Department of Environment and Natural Resources, four copper mines were identified as contributors to the country's production of copper concentrate from 2019 to 2020. Those are the Padkal Copper Gold Project of Felix Mining in Tuba, Benguet, Lepanto Mining's operations in Mangkayan, Benguet, the Didipio Mine in Casibu, Nueva Vizcaya by Oceana Gold, and the Toledo Copper Operations in Cebu by Carmen Copper. In the same report, it is said that the Philippines produced 242,075 dry metric tons of copper concentrate in 2020, which is about 18% lower than 2019 production levels. By the way, DMT, or dry metric ton, is a commonly used unit of measurement when dealing with metal ores, but it has the same value in terms of mass as the more commonly used MT, or metric ton. Now, this copper concentrate is the raw material that eventually ends up as copper cathodes after undergoing appropriate smelting and refining processes. So, what good does this production data on copper concentrate do for us? Well, copper concentrate typically has a copper content of 24-36% to according to CargoHandbook.com, and based on the same report from the Mines and Geosciences Bureau, the copper content of the concentrate produced in 2020 amounts to 60,856 metric tons, about 15% lower than 2019 levels. 
So, the value of the copper produced by the Philippines in 2020 is around 14.88 billion pesos, right? But this is just about 300 million dollars when you factor in the exchange rate. However, if we look into PSA's export data, even just for the first quarter of 2020, copper cathode exports from January to March already exceeded $400 million. And even more so, the roughly $300 million in value of copper concentrate produced nationwide. At this point, it looks like we are only able to export copper by importing copper. The global benchmark for copper valuation is the London Metal Exchange, and as of April 8, 2021, copper closed at about $9,000 per metric ton. And looking at the price performance so far this year, copper prices range from above $7,700 per metric ton to a little over $9,600 per metric ton. We're not really sure about the exact prices that were used in the valuation of the January copper cathode exports, but perhaps we may use the London Metal Exchange prices as reference. With the January 2021 exports valued at $158 million, perhaps that would be equivalent to about 16 to 20,000 metric tons of exported copper. Then by digging a little further, it turns out that there is only one company that is responsible for giving the Philippines a decent presence in the copper cathode export market, and that is the Philippine Associated Smelting and Refining Corporation or PASAR. It is the only copper smelter and refiner in the Philippines and it is managed by Glencore, a multinational company based in Switzerland. The local facility is located in the town of Isabel, province of Leyte. Pasar can process up to 720,000 metric tons of copper concentrate per year and can produce 215,000 metric tons of copper cathodes annually. So let's just say that the price of copper is at $8,000 per metric ton, then 215,000 metric tons in annual production can translate to about $1.72 billion or about $140 million per month which is roughly in line with the monthly export numbers we saw from the Philippine Statistics Authority. Pasar's annual copper concentrate requirement is definitely greater than the country's entire production volume, so it needs more than 700,000 metric tons, but local production is just above 200,000 metric tons. Then it must source most of its raw material requirement from elsewhere. And by looking at the refining capacity and export numbers, it very well looks like the facility exports most, if not all, of its copper cathodes. So, it is clear that the Philippine copper industry is far from being integrated. Although, there seems to be an effort to remedy this with some details posted on the Bureau of Investments website. The copper industry envisions to have an improved local upstream sector with one or two large copper mines to open up in the coming years. The proposed Tampacan Copper Gold project in South Cotabato should be able to produce copper concentrates with an equivalent copper content of about 375,000 metric tons per year. However, the project was scrapped due to mounting opposition to the project and a local ban on open pit mining. The copper industry also envisions a revival in the midstream with renewed interest in the production of copper rods and the establishment of a copper rod casting facility. Such a facility would then be able to utilize copper cathodes produced domestically. And then the industry also wishes to see developments in the downstream wherein value-added copper products may be made locally for domestic and perhaps international sale. Time will tell where the Philippine copper industry will go, but for now, that has been our quick peek into Philippine copper. Thank you and until next time.